Hey everyone, I definitely didn't forget that the Guide to Australian Spiders series exists. With that out of the way, welcome to another episode. Last time we covered one of the most familiar and spectacular groups of spiders in the country, the Golden Orb Weavers. However, these magnificent creatures have close cousins that, while every bit as intriguing, are rather more cryptic and far less well known and in this video, they'll get a well-deserved place in the spotlight. As covered in the previous episode, golden orb weavers belong to the family Araniidae, which includes the vast majority of orb-weaving spiders. Within said family, they are classified as part of the subfamily Nephilinae, which also contains several other lesser-known genera, two of which occur in Australia. Nephalangius and the very bizarre Herenia. Though closely related to the golden orb weavers from the genera Nephila and Trichonephila, and exhibiting commonalities such as an extreme disparity in size between males and females, neither of these genera spin the namesake golden webs that their cousins are so widely known for. But the fact that they aren't flamboyant show-offs doesn't make these spiders any less deserving of attention. Both of them, in fact, share a trait that, while rather more subtle than a huge golden web, is memorable and noteworthy to say the very least, and we'll cover that in due course. Let's start by taking a look at the genus Nephalangius. In the past, the genus contained several species, though most have since been reclassified to the genus Nephalangius and currently only two described species remain within Nephalangius, Nephalangius malabarensis, widespread throughout Southeast Asia, and Nephalangius papuana, which, as you'd expect from the name, is present in Papua New Guinea. It also occurs here in Australia, inhabiting the coastal regions of the Northern Territory and Queensland, its range approaching its southernmost limit around the Sunshine Coast, a little north of Brisbane. Nephalangius papuana are moderately large spiders, certainly not approaching the dimensions of Nephila or Trichonephila, but fairly sizeable nonetheless. The coloration of these spiders varies somewhat between individuals. Females range from a light greyish brown to almost black, though all possess a rather intricate pattern of stripes and blotches on the dorsal surface of the opisthosoma. At the very front of the opisthosoma is a prominent light band. The appearance of the ventral surface is also subject to some degree of variability, bearing an assortment of markings, the most pronounced of which are four large blotches, which can range from white to vivid orange. Males, as is the norm for the subfamily Nephilinae, are minute in comparison to the females. Both Nephalangia species spin webs that are rather reminiscent of those spun by the golden orb weavers. Being comparably large in size and somewhat similar in shape, at least at first glance. As aforementioned, they lack the golden sheen from which the latter group of spiders gained their common name. Evidently, Nephalangias aren't famous enough to afford a gold-trimmed house like their posh, upper-class cousins. Still, these spiders have taken their own personal spin on the classic orb web design. Instead of showing off with luscious golden silk, they've added something a little more practical. At the hub of the web is a tubular retreat, within which the spider resides during the day, safe from diurnal predators. Their webs are constructed adjacent to a solid surface, such as a tree trunk or rock face, to which the central shelter is affixed. Similarly to some golden orb weavers, Nephalangius are also highly synanthropic, meaning they often live around and benefit from human habitation. Now let's return to that memorable and noteworthy trait I alluded to earlier in the video. The trait that has earned this spider the rather comical nickname, Detachable Penis Spider. Adult male Nephalangius, like all spiders, carry sperm in the swollen tips of their pedipalps. That's the second pair of appendages situated behind the chelicerae and in front of the legs. 
Male Nephalengis, upon reaching adulthood, abandon web building, instead opting to cohabitate with females, and any one female's web may host multiple eager bachelors. So far, so normal. However, rather like humans, male spiders prefer to keep their missos to themselves, and Nephalengis has a very radical means by which it achieves that goal. At the end of the copulatory process, which takes place in a manner that's none too remarkable, part of the male's pedipalp will break off and remain attached to the female. This plugs up her reproductive opening, and presents a hindrance to any rival males attempting to mate with her. These eunuch males will continue to occupy the female's web post-copulation. So, in essence, if the Spider-Man movies took more inspiration from real life, the characters' romantic interactions could make for some very interesting scenes, probably ones that the kids could afford to miss. So now that I've planted that unsavoury vision in all of your minds, let's move on to the next feature in the video, and almost certainly the biggest oddball out of the Nephilinae, the genus Herenia. If I told you Nephalengis are closely related to the Golden Orb Weavers, you'd probably think, yeah, I can see that. But Herenia, whole different ballgame. These truly remarkable spiders at first glance appear to have next to nothing in common with their more archetypal relatives. Yet beneath that outer layer of strangeness, similarities can be found. The spinnerets are of a form typical for the Nephilinae, and like all members of the subfamily, the Herenia species exhibit extreme sexual size dimorphism. Male Herenia also employ the same interesting mating strategy as Nephilengis, which I guess isn't particularly surprising given the close relatedness between the two genera. As of the most up-to-date phylogeny of the Nephilinae, Herenia and Nephalengis are regarded as sister taxa. Currently, the genus Herenia contains 11 species, native to Australasia and Asia, most of which are endemic to fairly localised regions, with the exception of Herenia multipuncta, a rather widespread species that occupies a considerable portion of Southeast Asia. Only one described species, Herenia oz, is present in Australia, with the species name oz referring to the shorthand slang term for the country. It is confined to the Northern Territory, although there is allegedly another undescribed Herenia species in North Queensland. Given their unique appearance, one would be hard pressed to get these spiders mixed up with anything else. Their ornate, lobed opistosoma, bedecked with innumerable tiny dark spots, make females of these spiders extremely recognisable. The tiny males can sometimes be found sitting atop their mate, presumably to guard her against rivals, and in keeping with the subfamily's trend are comparatively nondescript, lacking the bizarre shape and intricate markings of the females. Aside from the obvious, Female Herenia can be identified based on more subtle characteristics as well. Like the warty texture of the carapace, and the fact that their sternum is wider than long. But let's face it, these spiders are such oddities that you'll probably never have to resort to that for identification purposes. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for assuming that these spiders don't really spin webs, instead simply sitting on the trunk of a tree rather like many huntsmen. In fact, Herenia not only spin webs, but in typical fashion for Nephilinae construct very expansive ones. There's plenty of Iranian spiders that look strange to the point of being otherworldly. Gasteracantha and Arachnura come to mind but still exhibit some adherence to spidery social norms by spinning the quintessential circular aerial orb web. For Herenia, however, simply looking weird isn't enough. If you're going to be an oddball, then you might as well give it your all. And Herenia have some of the most unique webbing habits out of any orb weaver. 
they create ladder webs that, unlike those of any other Nephilim spiders in Australia, are built on the same plane as the surface they are constructed on. Typically a smooth vertical medium like the trunk of a tree, such that they lie flat against the substrate. The resident spider rests in a small silken cup, situated at the hub of the web and attached to the surface beneath it. Like all members of the Nephilinae, the two spider genera covered in this video are of negligible risk to humans, being both extremely reluctant to bite and armed with a mild venom. That brings an end to this episode. As per usual, references are linked in the description. Feel free to take a look at the previous episode devoted to the closely related Golden Orb Weavers, and you can view the guide's full playlist, including the introductory episodes, here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and let me know what you thought in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you again very soon.